Welcome and let's talk about labor cost savings. How to calculate the financial benefit of people-centric improvement projects with focus on overall process efficiency, OPE, of manual processes in manual manufacturing, in retail, healthcare, and professional services, such as business administration. Let's get right into it. Okay, to calculate OPE and the benefit of OPE improvements, we need to know how many people we employ, their median salary, the burden factor, availability of human resources, their performance level or speed, the quality of output, and the leverage we are expecting from employing those resources. Then we are getting a result before and after the improvement project. And the delta between the two is the gain that we can make from our project. There are several formulas we need to consider to calculate labor efficiency. So it is the product of three factors, availability, multiplied by performance, multiplied by quality. And the loss, the efficiency loss, is our improvement opportunity. And that's 100% minus the efficiency level or one minus efficiency rate. By improving efficiency, we can generate one of two kinds of, uh, of benefits. One is we reduce resources, so we generate a cost savings, or we utilize the resources better to increase output. By increasing output, we have incremental profits. Let's make a practical example, a small example. We are running a coffee shop employing 10 people. Those are full-time equivalents, so full-time people. The average salary is, let's say, is 25,000. The median salary is 25,000 US dollars. And we have a burden factor of 1.3. What does it mean, 1.3? It means the factor one is for the salary, but then we have to pay in addition, insurance, sick leave, vacation, fringe benefits, and so on. So in this case, our burden factor is 1.3. Availability of human resources. Ideally, nobody is sick, everybody pays perfectly attention, is always available, that would be 100%. But that's never the case. So we have uh, availability losses from non-attendance. So let's say 5% of the people are absent. So the absenteeism is 5%. We also have meetings and unproductive time. So where we can do no, no value added work. So this means in this case, our availability is 90%. Now performance level, this is relative to the best speed that could be accomplished. Because people are new, I simply say in this case, we, uh, the new people are 70% effective means they can reach the speed benchmark to 70%. And the quality level is not 100%, one out of 20 orders, something goes wrong and it has to be redone. So 98% quality rate, first time quality rate. So first time through, right first time, or CNA, complete and accurate. It all means essentially the same thing. Then there is a leverage. What is the profitability we expect from the resources we employ. And in this case, we're expecting a profitability of one, a factor 1.5. The typical leverage is between one for nonprofit and in extreme case for five in case for uh, energy, for oil drilling companies. In our case, it is, let's say 1.5. Now we can calculate the labor improvement potential we have 10 people making 25,000 median salary. We have a burden factor of 1.3. We have a labor efficiency of 62%, means 38% of labor is currently not used to produce value. 
that results in a loss of 124,000 labor costs that we pay, but that do not generate a benefit. So if we are getting better and if you are improving availability, we can see the loss is getting less. So oh, let's still stay at 90%. So in this case, we, if we would go towards perfection, we could save $124,000 in labor. Or we can use the existing labor and the 38% that is unutilized and produce more. Serving more coffees, serving more cake. So we are making an additional profit of 186,000. Of course, the model can also be applied to a more complex operation. We have um, a semiconductor plant employing 1,000 engineers at a salary significantly higher. Um, example that. We have a burden factor of well, 1.5, uh, 1.4. Availability, performance maybe is better. Quality in high tech is probably lower. The leverage, I expect more in technology, it's a factor of two. And in this case, I have a cost saving potential of 59 million if everything would go perfect. Or the other way around, improving throughput and then having um, a profit increase of 118 million. Not unusual for a semiconductor, for a large semiconductor side. So that's it. Now it's up to you. Enter your numbers and um, find out what is the labor efficiency improvement potential. And if you need help, go to consulting, cost reduction, and we help you to set up a cost reduction program. And if you want to know, if you want to learn more, let's make some marketing here about cost reduction strategies, you can uh, join our academy and take the course. As an outcome, you will become a uh, Certified Cost Reduction Professional. I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction. This was Jörg Münzing from LeadMap. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.